Hi there, my name's Bruce Rain from Breakers Creations, and in this video, I'll be testing and reviewing this Tomlov DM602 digital microscope. I use a microscope almost every day for doing electronics repairs. I found it particularly helpful since my near vision decided to stop working when I turned 40. But my microscope was one of the biggest financial investments out of all of the equipment in my workshop and well outside the budget of many. So today we're going to see if this Tomlov DM602 digital microscope is a good budget alternative. Here is the Tomlov DM602 digital microscope. We're going to have a look at what's inside the box. Okay. Right. Now we've got a color instruction manual here. Well, that's nice. I'm going to be needing this because I have never used one of these sorts of digital microscopes before. So that's nice. Uh, and here is the screen. And first thing that comes to mind is that is a really nice big screen. So uh, that's going to be interesting. And I guess that is the microscope part as well. So I'll pop that down to one side. And what else have we got here? I've got a little container with, what does it say? Oh, let's have a look. Oh, these are little uh, samples we've got. Uh, Oh, that's some uh, fun looking stuff there. I can see some little critters in here. Uh, there we go, there's a honeybee wing. So that'll be uh, fun to look at under the microscope. That's a nice little touch to get those sent in. So, uh, so we can uh, try those out. Okay, we have got, oh, that looks like a little uh, light box for underneath so that we can check our little samples. There's the uh, that's a USB, USB power supply there. And what have we got here? Uh, it looks like we've got some lenses or something. I'll have to uh, have a look at those. And then we have a USB, oh, uh, what is that? That's a, that's a micro, uh, HDI to H, uh, micro HDMI to HDMI cable. So that's great. And Looks like a USB to USB-C connector or adapter. And there is a USB cable. What have we got here? It's like some sort of controlling device-y thing. Again, we'll need to find out what that is. And a few little bits and pieces here, a few little odds and sods. We've got a little remote control, a few little screws and things. Uh, some finger screws there, screwdriver. Is there anything under that? Oh yes, there is something under that. Oh, I think this is meant to come off. Yes, this is meant to come off, so. Say goodbye to that. And that looks like the arm that this is going to, uh, the screen is going to mount onto. And this is the base. So that looks like everything. And then we've got our little, uh, uh, little sort of gooseneck uh, articulated light there. So that's good as well. So let's pop this box out of the way and let's see if we can figure out how to put this together. And I'm going to have a look at the instructions for this. Apart from this part, this is pretty obvious to me, I think. So these are little clips that can be attached here for holding things down on the plate. Not sure I'll need that for what I'm doing, so I'll just put that to one side for the moment. Okay, so we've got some little thumb screws here to allow me to remove that lens. So 
So we have three different lenses here, which I am assuming will give us uh, different magnifications. We've got one here, which is 90 to 300 millimeters. We've got one here that is four to five millimeters and one that is 12 to 320. So we will try those out. I'll pop the original one back on there. Unfortunately, this is the wrong plug for this part of the world, but uh, I do have a USB power supply here, which hopefully will do. The DM602 is all set up, so let's check it out. On the back of the display, there is a micro USB port, a mini HDMI port, and a micro SD card slot. There is also the microscope itself attached to the back of the screen with a joint that swivels, allowing adjustment of the screen angle. I was quite pleased to see that the DM602 came with a 64 gigabyte SD card already installed and formatted. At the bottom of the microscope section, there are two screws. When you remove them, the lens will drop out, allowing you to replace it with one of the other two lenses. The black screws on the side here allow you to move the whole unit up or down on the shaft. The screw in the back allows you to secure it in position. Turn the center of the microscope to adjust focus. The lights are powered by this little barrel connector at the rear. Their position can be adjusted as needed and their brightness can be adjusted via the buttons on this little remote. This remote also has a power button, though the instructions recommend not to use this as it will cut the power to the microscope as well as the lights. It's better to switch off the microscope with the power button on the front of the screen. There is also this little light box provided. You can unplug the gooseneck lights and use the same power plug for this light box instead. This is for viewing sample slides like the ones provided. The controls on the front of the screen are power, The button labelled M is for mode and menu, short press to change modes, long press to bring up the menu. These buttons are for the digital zoom, this button zooms in and this button zooms out. The OK button starts or stops video recording to the SD card and the camera button saves a still image to the SD card. There is also this little infrared remote with additional options such as exposure control, freeze frame, sharpness and contrast. Pressing the menu button gives you two menu options. The first menu is the mode settings. The second menu is global settings. The mode settings will vary based on the mode you are currently using. There are three modes, still, video and playback. Still is for taking still images, Video is for recording video, and playback allows you to review or delete any images or video you have taken. Starting in the video mode, we can adjust the resolution. Just be aware that the optimum resolution for viewing on this screen is 1920 by 1080. There is also an exposure setting. As far as I can tell, the little camera automatically adjusts the exposure based on the amount of light. Then you can brighten or darken that image using the exposure controls. You can also adjust the exposure using buttons on the remote. There is a date stamp setting which allows you to overlay the date and time onto the saved image. There is a freeze option that allows you to temporarily freeze and release the image on the display using a button on the remote. There is also a sharpness, contrast and colour adjustment. The colour option allows you to change between colour, mono, sepia or negative images. The settings for the still image mode has a few other options. The first is to configure a burst mode that will take three images in quick succession when you press the photo button, rather than just one image. There is a quality setting that sets the level of compression for the saved image, higher quality, bigger file sizes. There's a white balance setting and the option for automatic, daylight, cloudy, tungsten or fluorescent. 
and there is an ISO setting with the option for auto, 100, 200 and 400. Increasing the ISO increases the gain on the camera, allowing it to function in lower light. The flip side is that the higher the ISO setting, the grainier the image. There is also a resolution and sharpness setting as per the video mode. The settings for the playback mode allow you to delete or protect files or play a slideshow of your stored images. The global settings allow you to format the SD card, restore default settings, check the firmware version, configure a crosshair grid overlay, set the date and time, language and screen refresh frequency. Each of the three lenses provides a different magnification range. The lowest magnification lens has 12 to 320 millimeters printed on it. This means it can be used at between 12 and 320 millimeters away from the subject you are viewing. The shorter the distance, the greater the magnification. For the sort of work I do, I think this lens will be the one I use the most. The middle magnification lens can be used at 90 to 300 millimeters away from the subject and the high magnification at four to five millimeters from the subject. This high magnification lens has to be used so close to the subject, these gooseneck lights aren't really suitable and it should be used with the light box for viewing sample slides. If you are using a USB cable with power and data, the microscope will assume you're connecting it to a computer and will give you the option of either mounting the SD card as an external drive on your computer or using the DM602 as a USB camera. In my testing, it behaved just like a USB webcam and worked with everything. If you use a USB cable with power only and no data connection, the microscope will operate as its own device with the microscope image displaying on the main screen. If you use the supplied HDMI cable to display the output to an external monitor, it will disable the DM602's built-in screen. This was a little disappointing to me as I was hoping I could use this for soldering workshops where I view what I'm doing on the small screen and then mirror that display to a projector or large screen for demonstrations. Regrettably, it's either the built-in screen or the external. You can't have both. Now it's time for a test drive. So I'm gonna be soldering components onto this little PCB and we'll see how the DM602 performs. The first thing I notice is that it's very responsive. Uh, as I move uh, underneath the microscope, it's instantaneous on the screen. There's no lag whatsoever. I'm using the lowest magnification lens at the moment and we'll just see how that goes. Uh, I, might I might have to zoom in for some of this stuff, but I'll just uh, test it out first. There's lots of room underneath the microscope here to work, so that's definitely a plus. The image is definitely very, very clear, very, very sharp. Um, I, d I do miss uh, having um, depth perception because the microscope that I usually use is an optical binocular microscope. And so you do actually get that, um, that perception of depth when you're looking through two lenses and you lose that when you're looking through a single image here, but it is definitely super sharp. If I push this board back, uh, it doesn't get very far before it hits the arm coming up off the back there, um, which sort of limits the size of what you can put under this microscope. Now this is quite a small PCB, no real issue there at all. But if I was working on a much larger PCB, I could really only work around the edges of it um, and not get right into the middle because of that size limitation. I've decided to change over to the higher magnification lens here just to see how it would go. So this is the intermediate one. Uh, and uh, it's definitely giving me a very good zoomed view here, that's for sure. I'm going to be using a hot air station for this next bit, but uh, uh, it's a metal base here, so I don't think there's going to be any issues with that, uh, that heat at all. One thing I will say is the image is super sharp from edge to edge, and that's something I struggle with even with my optical microscope. Um, with the camera that I have on it, uh, I generally get a little bit of variation of focus between the left and right hand side of the image.
Well, it definitely took me a little bit of getting used to because I'm so used to my other microscope. But uh, this particular IC has very, very fine pins, very, very close together, very, very fragile. Uh, and I have managed to solder those all down without bending any of them and without bridging any of them. So I think we can definitely call that a win for the DM602. Uh, that went well. I also played around with the highest magnification lens and the light box and recorded this video. This is a tropical mite, which I find on my chickens during the hot, humid months of the year. This specimen is a little under one millimetre in length, so I can't help but be incredibly impressed with the quality of this image. In summary, there is a lot to like about the Tomlov DM602. First off, if you think about the primary purpose of a microscope, which is to magnify something, it does a great job. The magnified image is super sharp and crisp, and this big 10 inch display is sharp with great color and contrast. And the output is focused right across the whole image. The three lenses give you a great range of magnifications and the two lower magnification lenses are designed to give you lots of working space between the subject and the lens. The microscope itself is light and portable which makes it really easy to set up wherever you want. My optical microscope is really big and really heavy. It is totally impractical to move it anywhere but the DM602 can be picked up and moved without any trouble at all. The DM602 is very easy to use and the recorded photo and video output is excellent quality and it was a great bonus to get a 64GB SD card included. I thought the little lights would be a bit weak but they proved to be perfectly adequate for the task. Recording video is super easy with the micro SD card and if you want to live stream your microscope the USB output can easily be streamed with tools like OBS. The metal base is great for soldering as it can withstand the heat of a soldering iron and hot air station. And getting the slide samples was a lovely touch. For anyone thinking of making the microscope a hobby, that provides a great starting point. One of the main things I like about the Tomlov DM602 is the price. The optical microscope I use cost a packet and even more to deliver because it's so heavy and the box was so big. The DM602 is a great low cost alternative. Check out links in the description for pricing and a special discount code. On to the negative side, changing the lenses is a little fiddly. Rather than the two screws, I can't help but think it would be a lot easier if the lenses just screwed into the microscope or even some sort of push and turn action. The microscope can't be used with really deep items as the shaft holding the screen prevents it. The screws to adjust the microscope height can be a little stiff to use. The mechanism might benefit from a little grease to make it smoother. And it is a shame the microscope can't mirror its output on an external display. That would have been a real plus for me. I don't see the DM602 replacing my extremely heavy and extremely expensive optical microscope anytime soon, but I still think it's a really great product. If you're looking to get started with a microscope without a huge financial outlay, the DM602 is perfect. For me, the DM602 is going to be fantastic when I need to do repairs somewhere other than my workshop, such as soldering demonstrations. I'd like to thank Tom Love for sending me this unit for testing, and don't forget to check out the description for an exclusive discount code. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions and thanks for watching.